I want you to listen up because can you imagine getting fired out of this every day and getting paid for it? A bit like sitting next to Carl, really. Anyway, that's what you do if you are a human cannonball. Today's Mike Dalton went along to meet one. There are two kinds of shows in the circus trade, dry shows and mud shows. Take a guess what kind of show the Great Moscow Circus has tonight. No surprise, really, given the alleged summer. But whether it's dry or whether it's mud, the sorcerer of the stratosphere will be there, beneath the big top, under the spotlight, every night and three times Saturday. Everything I know about the canon is in this book. So it's your New Testament. It is. That's my New Testament. I've got my keys, I've got my flashlight, my coffee, my shoes. It's everything you need. There are literally a handful of people in the world who are legitimate, tax-paying human cannonballs. And Philadelphia's Sean Marin is one of them, guest artiste on the Moscow Circus's regional run. When I get inside the cannon for the act, I go completely to the bottom. And as soon as he pushes the button for fire, I'm out. So that first instant is a real impact on your muscles and you have to stay very tight and make sure that you're completely aligned or else you will get hurt. When you're in the air, those three seconds are probably the coolest because then you're actually flying. You are Icarus, you're flying in the air. Uh, and I, then you realize I the landing's Icarus coming. Icarus came down. He did and I come down too. Luckily, I have an airbag, Icarus didn't. Stratospheres are not scratched by the sorcerer without the assistance of Canon engineer Zach Allen who cares for each element of the seven metre, three ton beast. Simple things such as raising and lowering the cannon you see behind us, um, all the way up to shooting and checking hydraulics and math, uh, all the calculations for each shot. Okay, and the maths is an important element for you and I suppose primarily for you because you're the man who's pressing the magic button at the end, are you not? Exactly, yes. So if something cocks up. <laughs> Sean learned his craft under the tent of the Ringling Brothers when a career as a trumpeter in the brass section moved on to a metal of thicker note. My weight is a, is a, is a, that's probably the biggest difference of what happens if I have a real heavy dinner, maybe I go a little shorter. Um, also the humidity, the temperature, everything plays a part. Such things as heavy dinners are fortunately no concern for the audience member. And so travelling on the mud-free path, and after buying the appropriate theatrical accompaniments, we settled in and tensed up. Let's have a fantastic round of applause for the incredible, the sensational show. I can see you in that suit, car. I don't know. Who would you trust to light the fuse, though? That's we the all thing. would. <laughs> Anyone. Exactly, Lisa. And you get a giant jumping castle at the end, car. It's all good. That's Give it a go. Fantastic. Does he get an encore? Does he do it again? No. That's just it. Looks like a waterbed, doesn't it? Remember the waterbed? Yeah. I love the waterbed. Did you ever <laughs> sleep on one? Yeah. Yeah, when I was a kid. They're yeah. a real pain to get rid of, apparently. Nobody wants leftover waterbeds. I love the waterbed. <laughs> it's like yeah. being on the ocean. <laughs> Never got seasick? Uh, no. I love the waterbed. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Still got a waterbed? I want a photo of it. Today at nine.com.au. <laughs>